What's up, YouTube? It's Todd Horst here with Tasty Tracker, and today I have the last small account challenge update for the 2020 account, uh, closing right before February, which is great. Um, uh, probably a month ahead of my schedule. I was hoping to be done in a year, or so a little bit less than a year, 11 months. Um, it's great. So the account is sitting right now at 10K. Um, it's 3:05, so the market still has an hour left to close, but I'll uh, consider this to be close enough. So let's bring your account here. We can see it's 10K, uh, got about 200 bucks to spare. Um, so that's good enough for me to call it for sure. I doubt the market will be dropping that much today that it would uh, go back under 10K. But even if it does, um, it's pretty safe to say that the account will get there um, in a very short period of time if it didn't today. But, but again, I think it will. Um, so yeah, we'll just go over the current positions and some stats and um, hopefully that will be a good conclusion to this challenge. Okay, so let's go over here. The last time I did an update was all the way back here on the 7th, so 13 days ago, almost two weeks, that's got to be a record for this challenge. Um, I don't think I've ever gone that long without doing an update, but doing the new challenge and trying to get some uh, new features and bugs uh, squared away here on the site. Um, I, I've been spending less time making videos, uh, been writing a lot of scripts and rewriting and rewriting and rewriting, so uh, bear with me as I you know, try to get to the next uh, section of uh, Tasty Tracker. But anyway, so we closed out Target. I covered that in the previous video, so we're, we'll jump to Friday the 8th. Uh, MasterCard and Dollar General, both for about 150 each. Uh, then on Monday the 11th, opened up three new positions. Um, the Apple ones uh, are varied expirations, so I opened one for February and one for March. And I did that just kind of a, a hedge that I thought we would be lagging up uh, potentially in a short order, but I wanted to give myself more time and collect more credit. You can see here I got 392 for this one compared to 350. Um, but uh, and I did two contracts of these, so that would be four positions in Apple. I was also doing that because I didn't have any Apple positions on in this account, and I wanted to sort of make up for lost time where I wanted that exposure and I didn't have it. So let's go over, look at where Apple was at that time and where it's sitting at currently. So that was the 11th, so do, 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 do right here. So it had this red day just below the 20 day. Obviously my hope was that it was going to be short lived and pop up above the 20 day. That didn't end up happening, but we only came down here to, we'll say the very lowest was 126. Um, and the strikes here you can see are uh, 125 is the sold leg. So let me highlight this one so I don't lose my spot. Okay, so we were still, even at that point, we were still out of the money, which is great. We've had a nice bounce up. This uh, squiggle I've drawn on this one is below the candles. Uh, I don't really have a rhyme or a reason why I do above or below. Sometimes uh, I do one or the other. But we can see here that it's had nice consolidation here. Um, I Again, I was hoping for it to come back up. I didn't get that, but it didn't uh, go down much from there. So we can actually kind of consider it having been consolidating since the fifth here, and now we are back up above the 20 day. You'll see this every single time when it gets above an SMA line, you'll have a nice green candle. Uh, in, it, in addition to that, we've got the MACD and RSI looking great, earnings coming up, um, which I think will get us another boost here. So I definitely think we'll be revisiting 137 here within the next week or two. Um, and being that this is the third time that we've hit that number, um, or and second time recently, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it came back and, and um, wanted to confirm its SMA, which will at that point be around this area before it finally does break through. Um, so yeah, so that posi position is looking good. If we go over to look at both of these that I put on at the same time, um, this one is up $72 today, and then this one is up $93. If you don't know how to do this, um, you know, by default it will look like this, and what you do is you select both legs and hit group position. And I do that because then it will allow me to show um, the profit just for that position, which encompasses both legs. And that especially becomes relevant when you have a lot of positions going on. Uh, Robinhood doesn't necessarily have that issue because um, they have a list of each one of your spreads separately over here. So you can see it uh, individually pretty easily. 
Okay. So let's get back to it. Uh, Dollar General was the next one we put on. That was on 111. Dollar General um, has been not cooperating. I put it back on here. So obviously the plan was that it would come back down here to the 50 day and then bounce off. And of course it did come down to the 50 day, but it fell completely through. And this down move hasn't, it's really only just begun. So we can expect another day or two here. I wouldn't be surprised if we stick in this area and the rest of this uh, downturn on MACD will be in this area. Um, and the support here that I actually have drawn back here for our, um, from a while ago at 205. I wouldn't be surprised if that holds, um, but uh, it is concerning that it's down here and I have the 210 that it needs to get above. Um, certainly not impossible, but that is right at the uh, 100 day, which means it's going to act as resistance when it gets back up here. Uh, that said, RSI and once MACD starts curling up, do look fine. Um, uh, so let's go over here to the position here it is. Um, looks pretty terrible. Um, at this point, it's a 10 wide, so I could close it out for about a 50, uh, for about 450, and so I would get 650 back of the collateral that I had initially um, put up. At this point, um, I'm hoping that this holds and comes back up here. At this point, I would look to close. Uh, it is on a continual downtrend here. Um, and so unless it can make it above that trend, I'd be looking to close somewhere in this range. If it can close above this, then it might even close above the SMAs and that might be enough to get it going again. Um, but, but currently, I think I set the closing order. Yeah, I set the closing order back to two, um, which is right around what I filled it at initially. Uh, 2.15. So uh, the idea here is that it hopefully will come back close and I'll be able to get it off for about about a wash. Um, closed Fiverr, that one was only open for six days uh, and that was a quick 160. That's nice. Um, and then we had DocuSign also close for 2.19. That was a, a huge one. Um, but that's what happens when you get a really nice premium. So if I go here to summary, the price started off, I sold it off for 466 originally. Um, and so, uh, let's see, strikes. Yeah, even though it's a 10 wide, two, I sold the 220, bought the 210. Even though it's a 10 wide, 466 is a uh, pretty high premium. That's only, uh, that's almost 50 50. Um, so closing it at uh, 219, yeah, it's great. Okay, so let's go to the ones I purchased or opened, I should say, uh, square. Okay, and what day was that? The 12th. Okay, so 12th here, uh, again, had the bounce on the 20 day, hoping that that holds, and so far it basically has been. Um, SMAs, like everything else, aren't perfect, so the fact that we might be a hair here below uh, isn't really concerning to me. We're still holding this general area that where, where my mouse is, 226, 225 area. Um, and uh, Square has just been on a tear. Um, so honestly, uh, I view this as pretty healthy. We could even draw another line, something like that, if we wanted to add a middle support into this channel. Um, it, if it does break below this, I uh, definitely would be uh, looking for a price at 219, 220. Um, by that point, it might curl over and do something like this. And let's get my squiggle on. So I do something like that. Okay, so at earnings, I'm looking for something around 260, 255. Makes sense to me. Um, and this is for March, I'm assuming. Yes, March expiration. Um, so that gives us the whole way out to right here. Um, for us to be above 210. So let's go ahead and mark the uh, March expiration, and then let's go ahead and do the 210 for green to show our profit. So I'll change this to green, come in here and change that to 210. 
Okay, so that can help you visualize a little bit. It needs to be above this line in order to be profitable, and so I'm definitely not concerned about that. The other way to look at it, obviously, which I've shown many times, is to come in here and just click on that, and then you can see the buffer that way. But if you're on Robinhood, obviously you don't have that functionality, so that's where I would do something more like this, where I set up the expiration and then the, the sold leg. Um, yeah, so RSI and uh, MACD look fine for here uh, for me here as well. Um, don't have much else to say there for Square. MA uh, has just been crazy. Um, we had this huge sell-off for no reason. I have not seen any news or explanation yet. I'm sure obviously somebody knows, um, but I do not know why it sold off. Uh, actually, actually only seen good news. Um, before this happening, so I'm not sure what the sell-off was uh, about, but I took the time here to enter in some more positions um, in MA, but uh, yeah, this is the th 335, so that's the whole way up here, is, which is actually right now right at the money. Uh, MACD, RSI, green volume, earnings, all of this bodes well for the position, not worried at all about it. Um, and again, like I said, I, I took the dip as an opportunity to get into more. Microsoft. I, I think I tried this one today. Um, but just absurd, <laughs> absurd volume and um, yeah, I think we'll probably break the upper downtrend line which will be great that probably will act as resistance but hopefully tomorrow or the next day certainly by earnings we'll go through that and if we can get above this gold trend line that would be great that's not gold for profit um that's just because that was the color it uh, showed up as so let's change that back to blue okay um i think i might have done that for contrast reasons actually so let's go with pink okay Okay, uh, MACD, RSI look great. Uh, not much to talk about there. Uh, again, I, I'm expecting us to break above this. It is possible that we bounce off of this upper band in the channel and come back down um, and retest something. But at that point, I'm thinking the 20 day will be in here. Um, so we might bounce off here, uh, revisit the 221, 220 area, and then come up above um, the blue channel. And then it would be bouncing in between these to get above that. Obviously, we'll see if it feels like doing that or not. Okay, uh, next we have Shop and Lulu on the 13th. I wanted to say um, I'll be continuing these videos uh, for this account on the for the pro members. Um, I will ha set up a page here shortly on Tasty Tracker, which has pro videos, and then you'll be able to see uh, this account and any future accounts that are pro or future accounts or videos that are pro only um, on that page. But for right now, um, this will be the last time the regular or supporter tier will will see this. Okay, so this is back here on the 13th. Um, so we had this uh, dip back down to the 20 day. I thought that was good support and it is still acting as good support. Um, I would not be surprised if we have a dip back to the bottom of this channel here that was established um, and, and confirmed multiple times back through here. Um, so that's certainly possible. Uh, however, it's not necessary. RSI and MACD again look great. So it's very, very possible that, let me draw this horizontal line here, something like this that is acting as resistance this very second will be support um, tomorrow and through earnings. So it, it may not, I might just skip this whole thing down here. Um, yeah, so I still like that position. Let's go over and see that. Uh, as you can see, it's, you know, I'm already up $150, uh, $100 today. So 40% actually uh, closing order set to 94. So very likely if we have a green day tomorrow, that will be closed. Um, but we'll see. So that's what that one looks like. Uh, next one is Lulu for the 13th. Okay. So here I was expecting the 13th. I was expecting the 50 day to hold. Not surprisingly, it did not, but we're down here consolidating at the 100, and it actually didn't, you know, it spent two days here. Um, and it's already going up to hit the resistance of the 50 day. 
um, it does not always have to bounce down and come come back down. So it is very possible that tomorrow will uh, break through because the 20 day and a 50 day, <coughs> 50 day are sitting right on top of each other. If it does get above that, um, that will act as a nice support going forward. Um, and we might be able to see yeah that looks about right um, and that could even come extended down in here a little bit but uh, I think that this uh, depicts it pretty well we'll probably get a leg up through here and then this will act as support and the SMAs will start to spread out again um, MACD RSI look great we have the 11.25. No. <laughs> That's shop. Uh, 3.50. Yeah, so, you know, we crossed through that. We were in, uh, in the money today, and, and now we're out of the money, so that's great. I can't do these long uh, videos, especially this late in the day. I'm fried. Okay, so pretty sure I just did shop, but I was thinking it was Microsoft when I was talking about it. Uh, closing Microsoft is 190 for that. Walmart. Um, these were these were my trades today. Walmart. Uh, I sort of got out defensively, um, so it, I I got out for a profit, but I'm just not liking the the action. Um, it's actually kind of at the bottom of this little bit of a channel here I expect that it will come back up to potentially up to 147 and then it could get rejected again and continue on this sort of slow downtrend Let's see if I can get a better view of the action so yeah I'm looking at this high here and then this lower high um, and so I wanted when I entered the position I wanted it to come up here um, and be above this line um, and it never made it up there and um, at this point it's only started the downturn uh, RSI is good but earnings coming up eh, I'm not that big of a fan of Walmart that I really feel like holding on to the position so I got out of the March ones I'm still in the February 145 145 is right where we're at so the idea was here I was going to wait till it came down in value a little bit um, so I don't know how deep this was, but it, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, it came up $42. So yeah, it was around $250. Um, and so that's an extra 50 bucks I can save. If I can get it to close at 195 then I'll walk away for a scratch and we'll call it a day. But yeah, that this the one I did close out was um, the March position. Uh, $42 profit. Facebook, I rolled out a month to give myself more time, obviously, with the downtrend. Um, this kind of scared me off a bit. Uh, luckily, it was a short stay. I need to be above the 260, at least on some of my accounts. Uh, yeah, this is, needs to be above 270 in this one. Um, so I think that position will be fine. I'm holding through earnings. Uh, the idea here is I'll probably close for a small gain. So 132, if I go over to Facebook, 132 would be about 25% um, after all the rolling. So um, to me, that's still great. I'll walk away as long as I'm not a loser. That I'm satisfied with that. OK. And AMD, this is the same position I have on the 2021 account, um, but just uh, in this account because I didn't have it entered. And I uh, got uh, $1, I think, less than, than what the 2021 account got. Um, but I'm only entering now, so that's six days I hadn't had that capital tied up. Okay, so let's go over the stats uh, all time. Um, so again, I started back here in February, uh, had 239 profit that month. So we only had two down months for COVID. And then the rest of this has been gains every month, which is great. And having 2300 when the market really started to recover in August, that was a really hot month. Um, obviously, that's insane for an account that is at that time was trading around five to six K. So it's crazy to go from 4K to 6K in a month. 
um, but then the 185 and 630, those are more normal numbers. Um, at this point here in November, the count is starting to get higher, so of course I'm going to cash out more, and then again in January so far. Uh, this is the second best month, but again, that's to be expected as the account gets larger, obviously. Um, so we can see here, um, you know, you can ignore this uh, stuff way back here. That was me messing around, not taking it seriously. So once I start taking it seriously, um, in February, um, we can see that I have a bit of an up month, then COVID comes down here, and these are negative months, but then from there it's been positive, and then the bars are the accumulate, uh, accu cumulative, sorry, um, and overall then so far the account, now this chart resets on January, so um, I haven't, uh, eventually that'll be uh, cumulative as well. But right now that's up, uh, total for uh, 2020 was 337%. And um, yeah, uh, just some interesting stats on this account. Uh, have some tags here, uh, earnings didn't do too bad with, but I'm not consistent with labeling those. So take that for what it's worth. Um, I've had 91 put verticals, and of those, uh, I made, obviously, the bulk, the funds, iron condors. This was before the challenge, um, so uh, if you're saying, well, I didn't see many iron condors, or uh, etc., um, that was those occurred before the challenge started, uh, because I've all, all time selected for this. Okay, and down here we have, these are my... This is my sweet spot, uh, 21 days to three months. That's why I enter in everything. Now, part of that is because that's what I play the most, clearly, um, out of 55, 51 plays, and these are all five, uh, you know, five or less plays. So, um, uh, but the the point is here, when I do that, I, I'm su successful with 78, 82% success rate. So to me, this chart, it means a lot to me. Um, because it will help guide you to where your sweet spot is. As for the winners, uh, Sedge has been overwhelmingly uh, a remar remarkable ticker for me uh, for the last two years. Um, so uh, obviously, since we're only in January, most of, the <clears throat> most of these gains were uh, from 2020. But yeah, nine losses, 100 percent win rate and eleven hundred dollars netted off of sedge spy some of these were the uh, long calls that i did at the very bottom of the COVID crash um and then microsoft uh, again microsoft and amazon apple um all i've played quite a number of times and uh with high success rates so okay last screen I guess I would show would be the account balance uh, just because it's fun to look at so let's go over to 365 okay so here's where we started this account um, uh, around February and sitting around 1700 net liquidity um, even though the cash value of the account was greater than that then we can I'll move my mouse here we can see the dip from COVID here and then the nice uptrend in the COVID return of course again uh, you know I can't claim that I'm sort of some sort of genius this was uh, you know the market recovering so um, but today is the highest value I uh, didn't I need to update this line as it's no longer relevant um, yeah so I think that's it. Uh, I thank everybody for um, joining me on this challenge for 2020. Uh, you know, I know a lot of the people that started off with me uh, dropped off because of how slow the process is. Um, and then, you know, a couple people made fun of me during the COVID crash, how my recovery took a while. Um, but, but for those that did stick with me through the challenge. We're able to see the vision and the strategy and the consistency, um, you know, paid off. And so we are basically able to 5x the account in under a year um, with some extreme circumstances. Yes, we had an extreme recovery, but we also had an extreme crash. And so we all know, um, you know, so many people that blew up their accounts uh, in the in the downturn. Um, and we also know uh, or have seen people, although a small percentage. But are now millionaires because of it. Um, so I'm thankful for just being 
uh, able to continue to make progress. I've got the rest of my life to do this, and so I'm not really worried about becoming a millionaire um, off of options uh, this week. That'd be nice, but uh, I'd rather have slow, steady, consistent growth, and so that's what we what we preach here. Um, so yeah, again, thanks for following along, and I'll talk to you next time.